Welcome. My name is Dr. Deb Bushway, and I'm the President and Chief Executive Officer of Northwestern Health Sciences University. So welcome to commencement. Are you excited? I can't quite hear you, and usually we get to practice this, so let's give it another shot. Are you excited? Woohoo! I heard some, I think. I hope that you continue to cheer for yourselves and make this your ceremony wherever you're located. I am speaking to you from Minneapolis, Minnesota, also home of the Minnesota Orchestra. The piece that you just heard, Pomp and Circumstance, was composed by Sir Edward Elgar and is commonly used as a tradition in graduation ceremonies. Now, I doubt that Sir Elgar could have imagined his composition being played in this format at a virtual commencement, but we're very pleased to have it. It is a wonderful weather day here in Minneapolis, and for those of you who might be watching from elsewhere, we're delighted that you decided to take some time to participate in our commencement ceremony. Despite the urge for many of us uh, in Minneapolis to take advantage of our relatively short summer season here in the upper Midwest or wherever you may be located. And because we are streaming live from Minneapolis, I feel that I also would be remiss if I didn't recognize the incident this past week involving four Minneapolis police officers and leading to the death of George Floyd. I personally am grieving for Mr. Floyd. My heart goes out to his family and I'm heartbroken to watch our community struggle to find a path forward. Our shared values of respect and service are deeply challenged in moments like these. We support our city leaders and state leaders in acknowledging the deep pain and anger resulting from this incident, and we stand in solidarity with those advocating for justice. We also wish, wish safety and peace for each of you whether you live in closer proximity or at a distance from the resultant unrest. All of this makes it even more important that we carve out the time today to celebrate the outstanding achievements of the Northwestern Health Science University graduates. I'm delighted to welcome everyone online and so pleased that you've chosen to join in this celebration of our graduate success. Now graduates, you didn't choose to complete your education during a pandemic. But as the Greek philosopher Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. And you have chosen your reaction well. You persevered and completed your goal despite challenges no one could have ever anticipated. You've hung in with us through Moodle, Teams, Zoom, Panapta, and you're graduating during the COVID-19 pandemic. Wow, it's a time you won't ever forget. But we should also take a moment to recognize that many of you have been personally impacted by COVID-19. Due to the extent of the exposure across our nation and our state, it's likely that you know someone struggling with this virus. Our condolences to those of you who've lost a colleague, neighbor, or loved one, and our healing prayers and energy to those of you who might still be on the journey to health from this infection. I'd like to encourage everyone watching to use the hashtag NWHSUGRAD, so NWHSUGRAD, to congratulate your graduate on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. If you do so, you'll see your post pop up on, our, on your screen on our social media wall. Now, a special message to our doctoral graduates. One of the highlights of a commencement ceremony when you are getting your doctoral degree is the tradition of hooding. When you step on stage to have your doctoral hood placed ceremoniously over your gown by an esteemed faculty member. For today's virtual ceremony, we invited you to select a family member, mentor, or other supporter to carry on this tradition. If you would like to share this moment with the virtual audience, please use that hashtag, NWHSUGrad. I also want to take a moment to note the active duty military members and veterans graduating today. These graduates received a red, white, and blue cord to wear with their cap and gown. Later in the ceremony, when the graduates' names are called, you'll see a designation of veteran on the screen. To all the active duty military or veterans watching today, please allow me and all of the virtual audience to thank you for your service. Well, we've got some steep competition in the world of virtual commencement this year. President Obama, Lady Gaga, 
Bill and Melinda Gates, but we have our own amazing stars to speak with you today. And to the Northwestern community of faculty, staff, board of trustees, and alumni, welcome. And thank you for your support. So great. Welcome to commencement. Or wait, is it graduation? So what does it mean to graduate? Okay, this is when you get to participate at home. So what does it mean to graduate from something? Right, it means to finish the academic program and receive the degree. But what about commencement? What does it mean to commence? Someone said it out there, right? You're helping me, you're participating. It means to start. So how is it that this one event, this one ceremony, can be called two very disparate names? Indeed, that combination, that apparently conflicting definition, that captures the essence of today's ceremony. It is a moment to mark the completion of a goal, earning your degree, and it is a moment to consider what is next, to commence the next phase of your journey. Both are so significant and both deserve to be celebrated. Now my guess is that this day, this moment, albeit probably not exactly in this format, was one of those images that kept you going during some of those late night studying. So while today is a serious moment, it need not be a somber moment. In fact, we want it to be a celebration. So please, there where you are, let yourself feel, express, and soak in the well-deserved joy of this moment. Okay, graduates, I am gonna ask you to do something. And I know I can't really see you, but I'm gonna ask you to participate. So please stand up, if you would. Come on, stand up for me. Keep facing what would be the stage, the screen, whatever your screen is, keep facing it. And imagine for a moment that you see the representatives of the faculty and staff who supported you in your goal of earning this degree. I know that they're here watching with you, and I know that they're cheering on as much as they would be from the stage. Now remember that those members of the faculty who have challenged, supported, and okay, maybe frustrated or annoyed you a time or two as you strove to get to this day, please join me in a round of applause thanking them. All right. Now turn around and look around the room with you. Look at those friends or family who celebrate with you today, or friends or family who are unable to physically be with you today, but are with you in heart and spirit, and probably virtually or on another screen or something like that. Maybe it's some of the colleagues that were in your class with you, but none of us gets to these places of success completely on our own. These people who are with you in some way today are absolutely delighted with your success. They have been with you as you've decided on this path. They've been fr when you've been frustrated with yourself, your courses, or your faculty, and they most likely have at times held the vision and hope for this goal for you when you thought you had become too discouraged. And well, okay, they might also have been annoying at times, but also join me in thanking them for their generosity and love. Okay, now face toward the computer screen, toward your whatever screen you're participating with, if you will, forward, face forward, and look toward your own heart. Celebrate your own tenacity, your intelligence, and your healing spirit. Whether you're earning your first degree ever or adding this to a degree previously earned, acupuncture, nursing degree, whether you're 65 years old and earning your first degree or 20 and earning the first college degree in your family, whether you've experienced the deaths of loved ones or the birth of new family members while you're earning this degree, you have achieved an important milestone in creating the life you desire. Everyone, please join me in a round of applause for each of you, our graduates. You can be seated if you aren't already. <laughs> Maybe you never stood up. <laughs> now, Northwestern Health Sciences University's mission is to prepare the next generation of healthcare providers. 
as we all recognize, the healthcare system in our country is in need of repair. And I firmly believe that this system cannot be fixed without the contributions of our professions and our commitment to integrative care. We might not be the entire solution, but we are an essential component. Certainly, this pandemic is teaching us how essential each of our professions are to the health of our communities. And we are so proud of each of you for choosing to be a part of this future solution. I have absolute confidence that if our faculty deemed you able to graduate from NWHSU, then each of you will lead our healthcare systems in the need to be truly patient-centered and genuinely integrative and deeply responsive to the needs of each of our citizens. We are all so grateful that you chose to join the ranks of other heroes in serving our communities and our nation in these ways. Happy graduation slash commencement day. <laughs> now, it is my pleasure to introduce our class speakers. Now, prior to each commencement ceremony, the students from the graduating class of our three colleges select one student to give an address on their behalf. We will now get to hear from the students selected. The College of Health and Wellness graduating class has selected their classmate, Melissa Schneider, from the radiation therapy program to deliver a message to us. Melissa is from Rochester, Minnesota. Before starting the radiation therapy program, Melissa was working as a medical assistant at the Mayo Clinic in the proton therapy department. After completing her clinical rotation at Bell & Health in Green Bay, Wisconsin, she returned to Rochester to accept a position with the Mayo Clinic in the proton therapy department. She loves her work and says it offers her the privilege of meeting patients from all around the world and being by their side during their journey of fighting cancer. She is happy to be in a career that she notes is constantly growing and improving. It is absolutely my privilege to present Melissa Schneider. My life of being a student has finally come to an end, and all that's left of it are the memories that forever changed me. To my amazing radiation therapy class, we have overcome every obstacle imaginable and become stronger and closer through it all. We have truly become a family. We support each other as well as torment each other in good fun. We have been there for each other for school and personal life matters, helping each other out or simply being a friend. We knew finishing this program was what we wanted and there was nothing that was going to get in our way. We have proven that there is nothing that can stop us from treating cancer. I hope soon we can all celebrate together in a group larger than five to celebrate the way we planned and worked hard for. Although our class tonight start off at Northwestern, we're happy to be graduating from Northwestern and honored to have our instructors, Jessica and Julie, see us off. You ladies have been with us through the start of this crazy journey. You two have been our rock through our moments of frustration and have stood by us and pushed us forward to where we are today. You have been there for every phone call, email, text, whether it was 10 o'clock at night or four in the morning. Because let's face it, when you're a student, you know no boundaries and you believe the world revolves around you. We laughed, cried, and argued about test questions numerous times, but you never once gave up on us. You have been the referee during some intense Jeopardy reviews. You both are now intertwined in our lives. We call you when we have an interview and you are one of the first calls when we get hired. And the sweet moment of relief when we pass our boards. We call you to tell you how work is going and what we are seeing and just being excited because we love what we are doing and you are a big part of that. I'm excited for the future radiation therapy students from Northwestern. If they are anything like us Lucky 13, they will be determined and fearless. Thank you to Anthony Gottel from Student Affairs for helping us with our resumes and preparing us for our interviews. Thank you to everyone who has made this ceremony possible for us for seeing that we deserved a ceremony for all the time and energy we have put in. Thank you to all of our family and friends for standing by us and cheering us on. To say these last couple of years have been a roller coaster is an understatement, and we could not have done it without your love and support. Thank you to everyone. 
Class of 2020, remember that success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. Congratulations to all the Northwestern Health Science programs and all the other programs. We did it. Melissa, thank you so much for your remarks and for acknowledging the dedication of the faculty members in your program. We are absolutely delighted to have you and your cohort graduating from Northwestern Health Sciences University, and we join you in commending the faculty who have been with you every step of this journey. Now, our next speaker was selected by the College of Acupuncture and Chinese Medicine's graduating class. The students selected Sarah Engen to present a message on their behalf. Sarah received her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the University of Wisconsin at River Falls, where she studied weaving and glass art. She is a nationally certified massage therapist with 12 years of practice, specializing in sports massage for college and professional athletes. As a student at Northwestern Health Sciences University, Sarah served in a variety of formal and informal leadership roles, including as vice president of the acupuncture program in the Student Senate and as president of the Student Diversity Club. It is truly my privilege to present Sarah Engen, representing the College of Acupuncture and Chinese Medicine. Hello, everyone. Congratulations, graduates. You did it. We're here. We made it happen. We have a small but mighty group of acupuncturists and a Chinese medicine doctor graduating. I'm so proud of what we've accomplished through the virtual transition. I want to share a brief essay I wrote for a scholarship because I felt like the piece needed to be shared beyond the panel of folks reading stacks of essays. The question was asked, what does leadership mean to me? I responded, it's too easy to attribute my abilities in leadership to my birth order as the firstborn or to the routine of chants I've memorized as a high school cheerleader shouting into loud crowds. We could further speculate into my years as a lifeguard when I was ready to come to the rescue. The concept of leadership can be a challenge to embrace if you don't necessarily want to take the lead and do the work to make something happen. But in accepting the responsibility, it is rewarding and freeing when you share the impact and momentum with others who feel inspired by your action. In my leadership roles at Northwestern Health Sciences University, I have found for myself that leadership means sacrifice. Self-acceptance is a necessity and creativity is everything. Leadership includes a sacrifice of time and energy. It's clear. There's plenty of work to be done, but who will do it? The original intention is to be balanced between school and home, giving all people in my sphere of reality equitable time and energy to grow. Managing the sacrifice of, and time, of time and energy is the keystone of leadership in staying healthy. The action of leadership also includes the sacrifice of ego when working to complete tasks for the greater good of the whole. The best part of sacrifice is understanding the cumulative effect it can have on large projects when you set aside even the smallest moments to build a dream and escort it to the finish line. Leadership is about self-acceptance. When I'm shining, everybody's gonna shine, sings Minnesota native pop star Lizzo in her hit single Juice. There's something to be said about understanding who you are, owning it, and inspiring others to do the same. Knowing how you work, both your shortcomings and your strengths, is a key tool in showing the way for others. To function as a leader in the fabric of society, we must be able to function smoothly within ourselves to share the free coursing with others. The long road of challenges and hardships I've personally endured are now only used as a tool to improve my communication and connection with others. Leadership is creation. Creation is the skill set of dreaming, with, without limits, and perhaps alongside accomplices, muses, and inspirers. You can act alone on a dream, or you can be the talking head of many hearts. To be a creator is to be a visionary and an empowering force. It's understanding how to generate, how to positively produce, and how to prepare for the coming limitations. Leadership is fine-tuning the subtleties and sensations of our inherited being, like trusting our gut and knowing how to have confidence that our ancestors who have walked before us are now leading us in the right direction if we are willing to listen. 
Leadership is understanding the creative power in all life and respecting the nature of destruction while moving swiftly to action. There's nothing more inspiring than having a sibling looking up to you, to people chanting alongside you, or seeing new students with hope in their hearts as they move closer to their white coat ceremony. The opportunities for leadership are more than inherited, but rather a chosen path of realizing energy and time is best used to build and produce connection with others. Leadership is inspiring growth and action through energizing and empowering the people. I'd like to end with a quote from Maya Angelou. When you learn, teach. When you get, give. Virtual high five, graduates. I am proud of you, and thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Your comment about building a dream and escorting it to the finish line applies also to commencement. Today's ceremony definitely re represents a finish line as well as a starting line to commence and continue your dreams. Okay, our next speaker was selected by the College of Chiropractic graduating class. The students selected their classmate, Elizabeth Johnson, to present her message on behalf of their class. Elizabeth received her Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences from the University of Minnesota at Rochester. Shortly after beginning her chiropractic coursework, she became actively involved on campus. She was elected as secretary of the Student Senate and later elected to the role of president of the Student Senate. She also, though, sought additional leadership roles and served as vice president of the Student American Chiropractic Association, or SACA. Elizabeth took her involvement to a national level by serving as the vice chair of enrichment for the SACA membership committee. Elizabeth is currently practicing as a chiropractor in Northeast Minneapolis with a special interest in serving the pediatric and prenatal populations. It was my privilege to work closely with Elizabeth when she served as president of the Student Senate and it is indeed my privilege to pre present Elizabeth Johnson. Good morning and welcome to family, friends, faculty, and staff. I know this is far from how we imagined this day would be, but I'm thankful that you are joining us wherever you are. To my former classmates, my current colleagues, and my lifelong friends, thank you for selecting me to speak on your behalf. I wish I could see each of your faces as I deliver this speech. I wish I could see you smile if I talked about the Cairo Kool-Aid, or laugh if I mentioned where to find John after he replies all to an email, or even scowl if I brought up that one slide on our Histo2 lab practical. All joking aside, I am honored to be addressing you today, and I miss you all something fierce. Preparing for this speech was somewhat of an emotional roller coaster. Not even one week after I began to brainstorm ideas about what I would speak about, the world around me seemed to come to a screeching halt. My thoughts about speech ideas and commencement ceremonies were replaced with thoughts about canceled classes and clinic hours, and sooner than I ever thought possible, we were quarantined at home. COVID-19 interrupted all of our lives in ways we never imagined. In a matter of days, we, in addition to hundreds of thousands of other graduating students, were faced with the reality that we weren't going to have the send-off we so greatly deserved and desired. It is an odd thing to grieve the loss of something that never actually happened. My classmates and I found ourselves frustrated, sad, and uncertain of what was to come. My thoughts were consumed with what ifs and how comes. Those who truly know me best know that my glass is always full and the sun is always shining. For a few days, this wasn't the case. I felt lost and burdened with the emotions of my fellow classmates. We didn't deserve this, no one did. We hoped for something great, something that appropriately celebrated our doctoral achievement. My quiet mind was left thinking about what that achievement really meant to me. Did this situation we were in disqualify the hard work that myself and my fellow graduates put in over the last three and a half years? No. Did I sacrifice my time, money, and often my sanity for the pomp and circumstance? Certainly not. While contemplating these things, I was reminded of a presentation I attended at a National Chiropractic Leadership Conference. The presenter shared with us a speech by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In his speech, Dr. King discussed that the desire to be great is a wonderful thing. Anyone can be great, he says, 
but he doesn't go on to say that greatness comes from money, power, or recognition. He simply says, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. He declares that he who is greatest among you shall be a servant. That is a new definition of greatness. Doctors, we were called to be servants, servants to our patients, our families, and our communities. This day, regardless of how it is celebrated, isn't about fancy gowns or expensive parchment. It celebrates the duty we have to our fellow humans, the duty to go out and use our new title to love those who entrust us with their health and wellness. As we are still in the infancy of our professional careers, there will be, and probably already have been, many days when you forget how great you are. When you are feeling less than adequate, I hope that you remember these words, smile, and take a look around. There is always someone who needs a hand. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. You definitely inspire us with your message to serve others, for I agree with you that that is indeed what defines greatness. And now we turn to the main commencement address. We're honored to have with us today, Dr. Juno Robbins. Dr. Robbins is an award-winning chiropractor, author, speaker, and teacher of wellness and empowerment strategies that inspire, uplift, and create results. Originally from Toronto, Canada, Dr. Robbins is a 1996 graduate of Northwestern Health Sciences University. He is a strong advocate of drug-free healthcare and self-empowerment through means of self-responsibility. Dr. Robbins is the recipient of several professional honors, including the President's Choice and Chiropractor of the Year Awards from the American Black Chiropractic Association. He remains active with the American Black Chiropractic Association, serving as a current board member and national mentorship chair. Dr. Robbins is also a past alumni board member at Northwestern Health Sciences University, where he has held associate faculty status as a community-based internship doctor, providing teaching clinics to students in their final phases of their chiropractic education. Dr. Robbins has also appeared on media outlets such as ABC News, NBC News, and USA Today as a wellness expert. He's been in private practice in the Twin Cities for the past 23 years. He lives in Minneapolis with his wife and his nine-year-old son. It is truly my pleasure to present Dr. Juno Robbins. Allow me to begin by offering a healthy congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. You made it during a very unique time for yourselves personally, a challenging time for our city and our country, for the world at large, you made it through. Congratulations. So we also have to thank our support network to all the parents, to the guardians, to the spouses or significant others, to the family and friends, and of course our faculty. Thank you for the support you provided to our graduates along the way. No man is an island. None of us achieve success on our own. So we give you thanks. So I'm not gonna be long today. The powers that be at Northwestern allow me the honor to speak with you briefly. They ask that I be short. So let's get straight to the meat of the message. So I had an opportunity to visit the campus of Northwestern a couple weeks ago. And I took a tour of the school. So much has changed in the 20 years since I graduated. So new research facilities, state-of-the-art technology, beautiful student lounge. One thing that had not changed was the cafeteria and the kitchen area. And as I toured the school and walked through the cafeteria, it brought back vivid memories. So I used to work in the cafeteria, I used to work in the kitchen, scrubbing the pots and the pans and mopping the floor long after many students had gone home. Uh, not for a little bit of extra pocket change, but literally for food left over at the end of the day. One thing about life, it's important to be kind. Everybody's going through something at some time. You, me, everybody. 
So be kind to others and have that empathy. That's a side note on the vision or the, uh, the speech I wanted to give you today is on vision, service, and balance. Three key words, vision, service, and balance are three of the core ingredients that are gonna take you closer toward the success you are deserving of and desiring after your graduation today. Literally, if you forget everything I say and only remember the words of vision, service, and balance, and you incorporate those into your atmosphere of ambition, it's gonna bring you closer to your goals. Everything begins with an idea. While I was working in the cafeteria at the school, I would start to envision how I wanted my life to be after graduation. What did I want my practices to look like? What was the population I wanted to serve? How did I want to affect my community? Those were all born during that time working in the kitchen at Northwestern. Not only did I think about the professional ambitions, but also my personal life. What did I want my family to look like? How did I want to travel? These are all things that were born at that time. If you look to your left, you look to your right, everything you see is born of vision, an idea. That's the genesis of it all. Perhaps we're watching this on a smartphone or a computer screen, maybe a smart TV. All those things were first born in somebody's mind and then brought to fruition. Even the invisible sound waves or the invisible Video waves, particles traveling from point A to point B, from communication tower to communication tower, brought about through vision. So the first thing I say to you, graduates, is develop a vision of what you want to create in life, where you want to go. That will be the genesis of your next step. Once you have that vision, it's going to take service. One of my favorite people, favorite humanitarians of all time, Muhammad Ali. He once said that service to others is the rent we pay for our time here on earth. It's a beautiful quote and so, so true. People may forget what you say. They may forget what you do. They will never forget how you make them feel. That's service unto others. Service will allow you to be great. So incorporating your vision and then providing a service will take you to the next level. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that everyone can't be famous, but everyone can be great. And everyone can be great because everyone has the ability to serve. That's you. That's me. Vision and service. I remember recently, last summer, we took a flight to Europe flew into Paris and spent some time in France. And then my wife and my eight-year-old son, we went on to London, England. Had a beautiful week. When it was our time to come home, we got to Heathrow Airport, found that our flight had gotten canceled. And obviously a little distraught, had things to do back home. But I remember the service of a single employee of the airline made it okay. He guided us through every single step, made sure we were put up in a beautiful hotel, spent an extra day in London. Then the following day, they had an extra flight. I think it was being repurposed from Europe back to the United States. They put us on there with four other people, a 767 all to ourselves. But even more so than the memory of that 767, having it to ourselves was the service provided by the Delta employee. And my son actually got a little spoiled. So he's eight years old. He thinks having a plane to himself is the norm. So the next time we flew, it was more of a budget airline at the back of the plane and by the bathrooms. And he's wondering, what is this? I let him know that service to others is the reason we had that initial flight in the first place. So vision and service. When you have a passion to serve, when you have a passion for your vision, it's easy to get out of balance. Remember, we're talking service we're talking balance. They say certain lessons in life will continue to hit you upside your head or sit, continue to represent in your life time and time again until you get the lesson. I know for myself personally, balance is one of those things that will represent every several years. I think of an example, about 10 years into my career, I had several clinics and employees and 
it was go, go, go all the time. I remember my father, he was ill up in Canada, up in Toronto. So every other weekend, I would take the trip from Minneapolis to Toronto, uh, often driving 14, 15 hours on very little sleep, uh, dangerous. But life was spiraling at that time, and I had no time for myself. There was no sense of balance. I remember being at a conference in California with my wife. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning. I was in a board meeting, and my cell phone started ringing. And I would send it to voicemail and would ring again, again to voicemail. After this happened four or five times, I said, let me take this call. And so I excused myself from the meeting, went into the hallway and answered the call. It was my neighbor from across the cul-de-sac in our neighborhood. And she's screaming into the phone and says, Juno, your house is on fire. Silence. She said, your house is on fire, it's burning. Number one, I assured her that we were okay. One of our vehicles had been in the driveway of the house at the time, and California time to Minneapolis time, the fire must have broke out around 4 o'clock in the morning. People didn't know if my wife and I were in the house or not, if anybody else was in the house or not. It was devastation. But after assuring her that everybody's okay and nobody was in the house, I said, let the firefighters do what firefighters do. And after that board meeting, I went up to the hotel room. And my wife was working on her laptop, laying on the bed. I said, sweetheart, our house, apparently there's been a fire. And she looked at me. I remember she closed her laptop. She simply said, how bad? I said, it sounds like it's pretty bad. She set her laptop to the side. She rubbed her belly. She was six months pregnant at the time, I remember. And just the epitome of calm, cool, and balance. And she said, you know, we have everything we need. We're here, we're safe, we have each other. We have our laptops. Literally, she said, we have our laptops. But she was right. We had everything we needed, and we could always start again. We talk about balance. Around that time, a mentor of mine, he gave me a book. And I can't recall the name of the book, but I recall a story in the book. It was the story of the Harvard MBA and the Mexican fisherman. And for those who haven't heard the story, Briefly, it goes something like this. There was an American businessman on vacation in a small, quaint Mexican fishing village. And late one afternoon, he was strolling along the shore. He seen a fisher boat coming into shore. So he walks over to it, sees a young fisherman, has three beautiful fish in the boat, and he compliments him on the fish. He says, how long did it take you to catch those? And the young fisherman looks at the American businessman. He says, oh, a couple hours, not long. The American businessman says, why didn't you stay out longer? You could have caught more fish. And the young fisherman looks back and says, this is plenty for me and my family. It's all we need. And the American says, what will you do with the rest of your time? And the fisherman says, oh, I'll take one or two to market. We'll sell them. I'll take the other home. We'll have a good meal. Maybe have a siesta with my wife. And Later, go down to the village and play the guitar and maybe have a few drinks and spend time with my friends. And now the American businessman, go, 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 he's feeling himself. He says, if you would have stayed out longer, you could have caught more fish. If you had more fish, you could take more to the market. You take more to the market, you could have made more money. And the fisherman had never thought of such things. He says, well, what then? And the American businessman says, well, you do that for months and years. You make more money, you could buy more boats and have fishermen working for you. Soon you could have a fleet of boats. You might be able to have your own cannery. Let your business grow and be big for 10 or 15 years. You could move to Mexico City or New York. And the fisherman looks at the American businessman and says, oh, what then? And the American businessman says, oh, that's the best part. When your business gets big enough, successful enough, you can take it public, sell shares to the public. You'll make millions of dollars. Then when you make millions of dollars, then you can retire. Then you can move to a small, quaint little village, and you can fish when you want to fish, and siesta when you want to siesta, and spend time playing your guitar and spending time with your friends. And I'll tell you, the moral of that story was never lost on me, that more is not always better. And it's important to maintain your personal balance in order for personal fulfillment.
So dear graduates, as you move on after today and you have the vision of what you want to pursue, what you want to do, and you have the service, being in the healthcare industry, being a healthcare graduate, you definitely have a heart to serve. When you mix the passion of that vision and the passion of that service together, do maintain the balance so you don't spiral out of control. I know my time is short. I'll leave you with just a quick piece of advice that a mentor gave to me. He said, number one, he said, in life, surround yourself in spaces and places that are conducive to your growth and your success. He said, number two, avoid the spaces and places that are detrimental and can lead to your demise. And number three, simply repeat one and two. That is some of the simplest success advice I have ever received and I pass it on to you. It takes a while to build the success that you're seeking, but one quick mistake, one lapse in judgment, being in the wrong place at the wrong time can wipe it all away. So surround yourself in the spaces and places that lead to your growth and your success. Avoid the people spaces and places that can lead to your demise. You know, try to keep it simple. I'll leave it with this. You take a complicated puzzle and make it simple. Like the story of the, the hardworking father who would come home at the end of the day and just want to put his feet up and relax for a half hour and read his newspaper. And this father, he had a young son, maybe six or seven years old. And every day when the father would come home from work, the young son would want to play, as kids do. Daddy, watch this. Daddy, look at me here. Daddy, let's play. And one day as the father was reading his newspaper, he got an idea. On one side of his newspaper, there was a picture of a globe, a map of the world. He took that picture and gently he ripped it into pieces, tiny pieces, and he put the pieces in his hand. He called his son over and said, son, you take these pieces. In the drawer beside the stove, there's some tape. He said, you take these pieces and you put the world back together. You put this puzzle together, and when you're done, then we can play. The young child took the challenge. He thought he was doing something. The father thought he had bought himself some time. As the young child sat in the corner of the room for the next several minutes, the father thought he had the 30 minutes he was looking to read his paper and relax. But five minutes later, the child came back. He says, Daddy is together. And the father looked down, and Sure enough, the child had put the paper back together and the globe was together, the continents relatively together. He was amazed that his young child could do that so quickly. And he said, son, how'd you do that so quick? And the child said, dad, it was easy. He said, on the other side of the world, the other side of the picture, there was a picture of a man. And I simply put the man back together and the world was back together too. Everything was okay. I love that story of making a complicated, puzzle simple. So graduates, please remember, vision, service, and balance. Make the complicated simple. And again, I give you congratulations. You made it. This time will bond you not only to each other, but to graduating classes of 2020 the world over. Within every crisis, there exists opportunity. And today starts your opportunity to make the world a better place. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Robbins, those words of wisdom of vision, service, and balance are key for us to remember no matter what phase of life we're in. So in recognition and appreciation for your role in today's ceremony and for inspiring our graduates, I'd like to present you with this commemorative plaque. Thank you so much. Well, before we present our graduates, I wanna take a moment to recognize academic achievement. It's a custom for universities to honor the academic excellence of their graduates by identifying them as having achieved the status of cum laude, which in Latin means with honors. At Northwestern Health Sciences University, we recognize three levels of academic excellence. Cum laude is for graduates with a cumulative grade point average equal to or exceeding 3.5 on a four point scale. So those of you who have been out of school for a while, as a reminder, an A is worth four points, B, three, C, two, and D, one. So these people have achieved a 3.5 on the four-point scale across all of the coursework they've done. 
the designation of magna cum laude is for a cumulative grade point average equal to or exceeding 3.7. And summa cum laude is earned by graduates with a cumulative grade point average equal to or exceeding 3.9 on that four point scale. Congratulations to the graduates who have excelled academically. These students will be recognized as we call their name. You'll notice their academic honors alongside their name on the screen. We also recognize class valedictorians who have achieved the highest GPA in the graduating class. From the College of Health and Wellness, class valedictorians are Emily Kreinert, Sonia Sonali Singham, and Nastejo Ali. Congratulations. The class valedictorian for the College of Acupuncture and Chinese Medicine is Julie Sheehy. Congratulations. And the College of Chiropractic recognizes Hannah Michelle Jansen and Alexis Olivia Toda. Congratulations to you. Well, we've come to the moment in the ceremony where we present the candidates for graduation. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Mary M. Tuckshire. Dr. Tuckshire earned her PhD from the University of Minnesota. She also completed her Doctor of Chiropractic from Northwestern Health Sciences University and currently serves as faculty in the College of Chiropractic. She also serves in the important leadership role of President of the Faculty Senate. Dr. Tuckshire is known by our students as Dr. T. Dr. T, please join me on stage. Thank you, Dr. Bushway. It is my pleasure to present the candidates for graduation. The first candidate I would like to present represents each of our graduates today. This candidate symbolizes the sacrifice the 2020 class as they forego an in-person ceremony due, uh, during this time due to COVID-19. So it is my distinct honor to present this symbolic candidate for graduation. Will all candidates viewing this virtual commencement please stand as this graduate comes forward to receive their degree. President Bushway, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Health and Wellness, it is my pleasure and distinct honor to present the candidates. These are the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science in Medical Assisting. Jason Keebler. Catherine Richard. President Bushway, I present the candidates for the Associate of Science in Medical Laboratory Technology, Malyun Abdullahi, Jordanos Berhi Haley. President Bushway, I present the candidates for the Associate of Science in Radiation Therapy, Jordan T. Anderson. Alexandra Eklund Cox. Dallas Marie Czech DeWitt. Bryant Zewitt. Gabe Fitch. Christina Joanne Luen. Elena Rose McGuire. Caitlin Leanne McNeil. Joseph Meschke. Lindsay Reyes Corona. Robin Robers. Melissa Schneider. Hallie M. Singleton. President Bushway, I present the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Medical Laboratory Science. Alfia Yusuf 
Farah. Suleiman Bakri Gaja. Sarah Lynn Morgan. Sunday Ojobo Agada. Nasdeho Ali. Atkinson Nubia Jerome Fontem. President Bushway, I present the candidate for the Bachelor of Science in Human Biology, Jody Ekstrom. President Bushway, I present the candidates for Relaxation and Massage Therapy Certificates and the Associate of Applied Science in Massage Therapy, Crystal Emery Snaza. Allison Michelle Gerstner. Melissa Anderson Sherber. Bobby Jack Brown. Karen L. Lordway. Emily Kreiner. Congratulations to all of our graduates from the College of Health and Wellness. I now present Spring Saldana, Massage Therapy Program Chair, who will lead our massage therapy graduates in reciting the Oath of Practice. Graduates, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I also welcome the massage therapy practitioners viewing this virtual commencement to reaffirm your oath. As a graduate of Northwestern Health Sciences University, I accept the responsibility to do no harm to the physical, mental, or emotional well-being of self, client, and professional peers. I promise to provide the highest quality of massage to those who seek my professional services. I will respect the confidential nature of the client-therapist relationship and I will conduct all business and professional activities within my scope of practice and the laws of the land. Congratulations. President Bushway, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Acupuncture and Chinese Medicine, it is my pleasure and distinct honor to present the candidates for the Master of Acupuncture, Molly Jewell, Brian Black, Sarah Engen, Kayla Ann Holstrom Harris, Dr. Shelby Don Lee, Julie Sheehy. President Bushway, on behalf of the faculty of the College of and Chinese medicine. It is my pleasure and distinct honor to present the candidate for the degree Doctor of Chinese Medicine, Dr. Krista Schulte. Congratulations to all of our graduates from the College of Acupuncture and Chinese Medicine. I now present Dr. Jessica Fryer, Dean of the College of Acupuncture and Chinese Medicine, and Dr. Coda, Clinical Education Chair, College of Acupuncture and Chinese Medicine, who will lead our graduates in reciting the Oath of Practice. Graduates, please raise your right hand and repeat after us. We also welcome the acupuncture and Chinese medicine practitioners viewing this virtual commencement to reaffirm your oath. I pledge to follow the way of the great healer. I will honor life from it. I will place my patient's safety and well-being above all else, and I will be faithful to the trust they have placed in me. I will treat my patients with dignity and preserve their privacy. I will give gladly of my skills and receive thanks humbly, for I am a servant, not a master, and an everlasting student. Today is another beginning, another small step, as I dedicate my to life 
to health and to healing. Congratulations. Congratulations. Dr. Bushway, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Chiropractic, it is my pleasure and distinct honor to present the candidates for the Doctor of Chiropractic. Dr. Ashley Adams. Dr. Bo McMillan Bates. Dr. Davis Hamilton John Bates. Dr. John Caleb Crawford Beadle. Dr. Brian David Billing. Dr. Samuel Edward Bisson. Dr. Joel Stephen Blumberg. Dr. Joseph James Cassins. Dr. Tong Chang. Dr. Allison Ann Dargetts. Dr. Jennifer Ashley Dorn. Dr. Tyler Scott Doucette. Dr. William Christopher Eifert. Dr. Bradley Michael Urkula. Dr. Gregory Michael Freitag. Dr. Nicole Frogner Cascio. Dr. Grant Alexander Greenfield. Dr. Eric Kenneth Haluka. Dr. Haluka is also receiving Bachelor of Science in Human Biology. Dr. Hannah Michelle Janzin. Dr. Elizabeth Sarah Johnson. Dr. Kelsey Kovac. Dr. Harmony Lynn Cuban. Dr. Anna May Lano. Dr. Benjamin Joseph Lichtig. Dr. Luke James Lecker. Dr. Maria Teresa Lundstrom. Dr. Caleb John Markshausen. Dr. Nathaniel Michael Mydell. Dr. Anna Maria Miller. Dr. Nacy D. Ocampo Sorto. Dr. Allison Jade Osowski. Dr. Drew Michael Path. Dr. Ashley Morgan Prestis. Dr. Cody Bernard Robeck. Dr. Robeck is also receiving the Bachelor of Science in Human Biology. Dr. Megan Ann Saylor. Dr. Eric M. Seiler. Dr. Sonia Sonali Singham. Dr. Singham is also receiving a Bachelor of Science in Human Biology. Dr. Caitlin Elizabeth Smith. Dr. Heidi Spores. Dr. Brandon Michael Stanek. Dr. Tony C. Stevenson. Dr. Jacob Andrew Stoffel. Dr. Dylan Matthew Teske. Dr. Alexis Olivia Toda. Dr. Trevor Tipton. Dr. Matthew M. Vredenberg. Dr. Eric Waldeland. Dr. Tujay Zhang. 
Dr. David Yang. Congratulations to all of our graduates from the College of Chiropractic. I now present Dr. Joseph Muldoon, Assistant Professor, Department of Basic Sciences, who will lead our graduates in reciting the Chiropractic Oath of Practice. I welcome doctors of chiropractic viewing this virtual commencement to join and reaffirm our oath. Graduates, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name, do hereby affirm before God and these assembled witnesses that I will keep this oath and stipulation to hold in, in esteem and respect those who taught me this chiropractic healing art, to follow the methods of treatment which according to my ability and judgment, I consider for the benefits of my patients, to abstain from whatever is harmful or unethical, to stand ready at all times to serve humanity without distinction of race, creed, or color. With purity, I will pass my life and practice my art. I will at all times consider the patients under my care as of supreme importance. I will not spare myself in rendering them the help which I have been taught to give by my alma mater. I will keep in confidence all things revealed to me as a physician. While I continue to keep this oath unviolated, may it be granted to me to enjoy life and the practice of the chiropractic healing art, respected by all people at all times. Congratulations, graduates. Welcome, colleagues. Will all the graduates in the virtual audience please rise while Dr. Bushway confers the certificates and the degrees. Thank you, Dr. T. Well, I hope you're all ready. This is the moment you've been waiting for. On recommendation of the faculty and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Northwestern Health Sciences University and by the state of Minnesota, I hereby confer upon you your certificates and degrees with all of the pertaining privileges, rights, and responsibilities. On behalf of Northwestern Health Sciences University, please join me in congratulating our graduates. Now graduates, at past ceremonies, you would file out of the auditorium past lines of faculty and staff applauding as you walked by. We absolutely still do applaud you and now welcome you as alumni of Northwestern Health Sciences University.